There are a number of times when the Bible mentions keys in a symbolic manner. As we have seen, Luke 11.52 mentions the key of knowledge. Woe unto you, lawyers, for you have taken away the key of knowledge. Ye entered not in yourselves, and them that were entering ye hindered. Another key is the key of the house of David, first mentioned in Isaiah 22.22. 22. And the key of the house of David will I lay upon his shoulder, so he shall open, and none shall shut, and he shall shut, and none shall open. This key is mentioned again in Revelation 3.7. These things saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth. Matthew 16.19 gives us further insight, saying, And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt bind on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever thou shalt loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. These keys, true to the nature and function of what a key should be, have the power to lock and unlock things both in heaven and on earth. He is expanding on the key of the house of David here, adding the detail that the heavenly meaning can be couched in earthly terms, and likewise be revealed by unlocking them from their earthly limitations. Matthew 23.13 demonstrates how the power to lock and unlock the kingdom of heaven lies also with earthly rulers. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men, for ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. So clearly at the time the mystery was known, because there are those who were then entering. There was therefore a period when a concerted effort was being made to actively suppress these keys, so as to deny these keys to the people. Jesus, who is also known as the Logos, or the Word of God, conquered hell and death through his resurrection and took away their power to conceal the truth, as he himself testifies in Revelation 1.18. I am he that liveth, and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore, amen, and have the keys of hell and of death. He opened up what they had long kept secret, at least for a while. When the keys are taken away and there is nothing left but the earthly level understanding, there is room for endless books and endless speculation and endless strife. This is the downside to having such a double-edged sword as the Word of God. Depending on which side has control over the keys, we are either made free or kept prisoner. A key of the bottomless pit is mentioned in Revelation 9.1. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth, and to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. And again in Revelation 20, 1, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand. In the ordinary sense, a pit is nothing more than a hole in the ground. Figuratively, however, if heavenly meanings are hidden from our sight, then all we can see are their earthly counterparts as if we were in an earthly pit. So we simply see a pit as a pit. We lose sight of the heavenly level meanings as we focus entirely on the earthly level that surrounds us. This imagery of a bottomless pit, therefore, indicates that unless we realize this and find these keys again, there is no end to how long the earthly understanding can keep us shut out of the kingdom. Now look closely at the similarity between these two accounts and you will recognize one of the many ways for us to derive keys, namely parallelism. Whenever you see close similarities, you can line up the parallel sections and this will generally produce a key. In this particular instance, we see that the word star is really a code word or key for an angel. An angel fell from heaven to the earth. This star is obviously Satan. This is a well-known and widely accepted phenomenon in biblical literature. The only question is just why no one seems to go beyond the handful of well-known keys to discover hundreds or perhaps even thousands more that potentially await our discovery. 
One of the more interesting aspects of understanding the keys of knowledge, the keys of the kingdom of heaven, is how these keys work to unlock not only the canonical, but the non-canonical scriptures as well. The Gospel of Thomas 39 reads, Jesus said, The Pharisees and the scribes have taken the keys of knowledge and have hidden them. They did not go in, and those who wished to go in they did not allow. But you, be as wise as serpents, and as innocent as doves. Now pay special attention to the last verse, where Jesus is likening those who hide the keys to serpents, and his listeners, those who wish to enter into the kingdom, to doves. The innocent, the pure, the seekers, will enter into the kingdom when they recognize what the Pharisees, scribes, and teachers of the law have done. So we can see how we can begin to find more and more keys until, as it states in 2 Peter 1.11, For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The key to unlocking the Bible is the knowledge and understanding of keys. We are told that the keys can be hidden, and so long as the keys remain hidden, we cannot enter into the kingdom of heaven. We are thus bound on earth, or, in other words, kept subject to an earthly understanding. There are hundreds, perhaps thousands of keys to discover. The more keys we can find, the more knowledge we can unlock. Let us find that entrance and unlock it.